top of the morning, folks. Got um, my brother car I'm tinkering with. Besides another car I'm putting a starter on, but who don't know how to do these? These are these are mediocre jobs, right? But I'm I'm very curious today. I want to I want to see how it alter fuel trims and how it alter fuel trims is going to be the catalytic converter and possibly spark plug depending on how much time I got. Uh, this is my brother Civic and it has the infamous crack on the manifold here which is why we got lean codes and catalyst efficiency codes. Uh, let's look at some of the live data. Uh, so before we do that Here's the codes here, P0171, P0420. Uh, and being that these are these are following one another, uh, let's look at the fuel trims in the freeze frame. Alright, here's our freeze frame uh, with the code stored for the P171. Uh, so it occurred in closed loop. It's only one fuel system status. So we got one bank. Calculated load was 54%. So the throttle was about 54% um, depressed. Coolant was in closed loop, of course, because we got over normal temperatures, 180. Short term was at 21 positive. So it was detecting a lean condition to add 21% more fuel. So low negative is taken away positive is adding so we're in positive right now with short term and long term is fixed at around 20 percent so on top of it adding 20 percent initially long term is adding 20 percent more fuel uh, we have intake manifold pressure which can be something but This, I think this is more like going to be a dummy reading because it's not no, uh, this is not going to be PSI because this car is naturally aspirated. So this is more like a dummy reading here. So we can only go off the interpretation, ignore the PSI, because if this was, it could be right. It could be something wrong with the intake manifold pressure sensor. Could be. When this code set. Um, but I'm going, I'm tackling the obvious being that is, let's just say it was having faulty readings and having, uh, eight PSI reading versus being in a, uh, uh, inch, inch vacuum, you know, it could be trying to add 20% more fuel, but it's pretty obvious you know the oxygen sensor is not going to be reading the same as the intake manifold sensor unless they're tied in together but that's neither here nor there We're, and I'm not going to go in depth with that um, because it's real obvious that this manifold has a crack in it so we're going to look at live data and leave this as a question mark um, I am in the generic feature right here of the bi-directional scan tool alright so Dun, dun, dun. So we at RPM. It was it happened at 1400 RPM. So it was a accelerating. Seemed like based off the clues here, this checking like manifested uh, from a uh, an acceleration. So we have 54% gradual accelerating, ascending up in speed, and we don't have speed here, but we do have RPM, which kind of gives us the idea that it occurred during a takeoff versus a uh, versus highway speed. Uh, it implies, up oh, there's the speed right there. Sorry. So yeah, it, it occurred during a takeoff. So yeah. Sorry about that. I overlooked that. Getting ahead of myself. So we got intake temps at 138. So this car was good and warm up and absolute throttle position was uh, 16%. So it, it, it's just a gradual takeoff. So I was wrong as far as 50%, 54% throttle load. It's a couple things that could alter uh, load percentage. Let's go to live data, but mainly it's usually going to be a throttle position sensor. Let me go back. Let's see what our readings are now. All right, so currently at 194, I've been letting the car run. We have 23% load at idle. 
Like I said, normally the throttle position is going to alter it. Look at that fuel trim. Short term is at 41%. Now, this is not low conditions. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to resemble the low conditions while driving, take a snapshot of the live data. I'm not going to record it for the safety reasons. Uh, so, short term, we're going to compare, more than likely, I'm just going to compare the idle. Uh, and just get a snapshot of around about the same low, 54% at uh, 16% throttle and um, uh, 1400 RPM. So air temp, it's a cool day today, so we get there. So the throttle natural static state is in maybe at 10%. Um, cool. So I got what we got what we need. Mainly the short term, we can see this pegged out, forty plus percent, nearly pegged out. Uh, long term is at fourteen. We need that below, say about ten percent. Uh, lean coast generally go over. It depends on the manufacturer. I remember one being as extreme as sixteen percent uh, on a Hyundai. As soon as it hit sixteen five, and then bam, you know, check in and like. Uh, so some manufacturers are different, but I think the general rule of thumb is below or, or above 10%. So those are more uh, general readings. All right, so cool. We got this. Um, want to go? For, I'm gonna go over the basics of removing this converter, and I can show you the crack once I get this converter out. But real quick, this is common. Uh, it's gonna be right above the oxygen sensor, and what happens? why it would get these lean readings, poor readings. Uh, it's not the oxygen sensor. My brother literally came over like, hey, yeah, let's throw this on there to fix the code. No, 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 that's not the case. It's gonna be the uh, converter with the manifold because the manifold is connected to the converter. And if the oxygen sensor, especially the first one, is getting poor readings, then such for, for reasons such as this, you're gonna get lean mixtures, you're gonna get crazy uh, numbers or crazy values because of all that burnt fuel is not going uh, and getting calculated by the initial reading uh, from the sensor, from the primary sensor. So let's go back because that hairline crack is through the manifold, the sensor can pull in oxygen because of how the flow of the tubes are to push out but at the same time depending on which cylinder is firing, will actually start pulling in uncounted for uh, oxygen. So basically uh, everything that is being combusted that needs to be uh, 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 calculated or accounted for is being pushed out and is pulling back in oxygen. So that's why we get these lean mixtures. So that should make perfect sense. So anyway, um, this is old obviously, it's cracked, uh, it's got rust up there so it doesn't look good so i'm going to get some snapshots and when i come back we'll just start pulling stuff down and also we can inspect the plugs because we're going to put plugs in here too it smells really rich and being that the car is detecting the lean condition it's adding 20 percent more fuel it doesn't need it it just thinks it needed because of the unaccounted for air that's coming into the exhaust system thinking it's lean. So what's going to happen is going to supply more fuel, file those plugs out, hence is why I'm smelling this really, really rich condition right now. So plugs should be black. That's going to have a crack in it. These lean mixtures are only caused, and this P420 is only caused by this uh, crack in the converter or exhaust manifold. So we'll be back. Oh, I forgot to put the camera up. So this uh, sensor here, the auction sensor is aftermarket. Um, I can tell by the length. It's pretty excessive and they got zip ties on here. I, I uh, took the car on test drive. I'll show you the before fuel trims when I get the uh, converter put on here. And uh, we can compare those. But I'm in the process of <clears throat> taking off these zip ties. And... Even though we got a new one, I'm still going to use a new oxygen sensor and uh, 
compare those numbers. So you can see here all the black, that's the unburned fuel uh, or the rich mixture that collected on the inside of this uh, heat shield here. And that should have been where the crack was, where I saw. And there it goes. So you can look down there. You see that thick crack all through there. So there's our crack. I want to, you don't have to, but I want to spray these bolts with brake cleaner to get it all cleaned up. And uh, I will use some PB Blaster. Assuming to make my life a little easier. Um, there is a bracket that holds the catalytic converter into place, or this upper manifold in place to the body, to the block. Uh, I should be able to get to that from the top also. It's been a while since I've done one of these. This probably might not be necessary. I'm just hoping it goes back because aftermarket. We got it off Rock Auto. I should have a if I can get my fingers down here. Uh, these should be 12 millimeter. Yep, 12 millimeter. And the bottom one should be a 14. The bracket. And uh, should be able to, hopefully I don't have to use any heat to get those bolts off from the bottom. So let's get, I'm gonna get those. Um, I highly doubt I'll have to use anything special. Like I said, the other one should go in easy because they're just so noticeably smaller. Uh, did I miss anything? I think that's right. Uh, I forgot. That fan. Let's get hung up in those little fins of the heat shield here. But here's the better view of the crack. This is very common. Like I said, the sensor was replaced before. I mean, I could reuse it, but, you know... I don't, I don't know the condition of it. I mean, you know, I'm still gonna put it in since we already got a new one. I'm gonna work on getting this downstream out. Shouldn't be no problem. The crack, you see the crack actually coming down a little further up there. Hmm. Not recommend it, but I'm gonna try it anyway. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. Oop, there we go. <laughs> I don't think we gotta worry about it. If it broke, oh, if it's broken, oh well. I mean, it's pretty old anyway, but I highly doubt it. Those wires are implanted in there pretty well. <laughs> I didn't expect to do all that, but I'm gonna take some brake cleaner and clean this sensor off. Especially if it's been running a little rich, it'll help clean some of that carbon off of it and just let it dry out of course I'm going to put a little bit of anti-seize on it Strangely, uh, this is, well, it still could be because of the oxygen getting inside of the converter uh, because of the exhaust leak, but I, I would have expected it to be black. This is normally a sign of like heat if it's kind of got like a red tan going on there, but hell, it could be rust. But um, like I said, I'm putting a new one on here and I'm going to get that other one shortly.
I think it's gonna be like a two-piece style. It's like it's pretty small. Like the same ones you get from models on. So it looks like this thing is pretty light too. Came with a gasket. Uh, came with the downpipe gasket and came with uh, these bolts here. So we're gonna get the four. Four bolts here. These are gonna be 13s. Put this here. I just don't think these are gonna work that well, I swear. Let's see. I don't like these composite style gaskets. <clears throat> and we're gonna get this one lined up like so. We gotta put these washers on there. I'll put the uh, upstream in there last. Uh, let's see here. Get a new gasket for the manifold on there. And I'm just going to install everything in reverse order. And it's pretty much cut and dry. You just install what you re removed. The other studs here are going to be a thing that needs to go in there. The short end goes into the flange to the manifold. To the downpipe directly to that flange. So yeah, you can see how long it is. The short end is what's gonna go into the flange. Here. Oh shit. bracket down here that sits on the uh, right side of the block. Fits right on there. So even though I got the bottom bolted up, the bolts are in the in the downpipe flange, there's some fitment problems. <sighs> What I could do, I probably could loosen up the uh, converter to the manifold and see if it'll twist a little bit more. But you know, this is there. This is going to be a fitment problem. Let me try that. All right, so I loosen up the bolts. It seemed to twist. That seemed to seem like it take taking care of it.
All right, that seems to have taken care of that. So I'm gonna get the rest of the bolts in here and uh, hmm, get the downpipe bolts in the new oxygen sensor at the top here and start it back up. Inverters in there, got the oil changed. The only thing left is the spark plugs. So I'm gonna start up, see how it sounds, and we shouldn't have no more exhaust leak. <clears throat> so let's check it out. Now that there's a small leak, but that's further in the back, uh, closest to the muffler and its flange. But other than that, I mean everything else on this car is in here. It's good, and this is the main part we're worrying about: the pre and post and the pre uh, sensors. So anything before that, and I guess a little bit after that. So we're fine. Uh, let's go back to um, let's go to the live stream. For the fuel trims. Right, so we got to load it up here. Let's see. So let's take a look at our short term, which is drop from positive 20. It's going down to 12, 13 now, which is great. Let's go to the photos. Uh, go to gallery. So RPM, this is at idle here. Our uh, long term was at 18, short term was at 14. So long term is now at 14. Now, uh, I didn't clear the code yet, and when you clear it, the sensors, the, the oxygen sensors should go through a, a recalibration phase. So you'll do like a uh, reinitialization process, if I recall. That's what it's called. Or uh, let's go back. So I'm going to clear them. I just want to see what happens at idle. Hmm. Now I could just drive it and see what happens once I start driving, then it will go through its uh, adaption phases because it idle is really not going to do too much unless I clear it, then it will relearn itself. Uh, let me see something. I wouldn't mind leaving it be though for the time being. Let's, let me take it on the drive right quick and uh, see where it is and I'll take a snapshot of that but uh, before I do let's look at the gallery here now this was during driving conditions with the, with similar loads of the freeze frame and uh, that was 54% load uh, had a 15% throttle I'll try to get as close as I can to 16% um, it was 1400 RPM, but I'm at 1600 here. And uh, mainly the sensors, long term or short term, was at 5% uh, positive and 18% long term. So let me take it on a drive, get those same pids loaded up, and come back. Cool. So I just got back off my drive here and. I got the oh wow it just went down again so I got the um, long term fuel trim down within reason positive negative 10 so it's at it's below positive 10 percent uh, let's go back to the screenshots gallery <clears throat> so this is 
the final load I got, which is about 87% at 800 RPM, so I was going slightly up the hill. Uh, that was about, what was it, 10% there. And the beginning, we was at 14% during the, after the fix. So we started at 14% and it slowly started to dwindle. Got down to 12 and the lowest I got was 10.2, my last photo. And the current stat status of the fuel trim is, oh wow, went down again, 8.6. And this is at the uh, idle. So this issue's fixed. Why am I showing the fuel trims and not clearing the code? Um, reasons being this, you can drive the car at this state at it, as it is currently now. So my brother's car is fixed. Um, he wanted to throw oxygen sensor in there and I was like, no, that's not the case. You have to fix the leaks first. And this was that case. You saw the crack, prepared the crack. And uh, we compared the fuel trims and this is what we got. So the intake manifold pressure from earlier, I think this is just, I know it says PSI, but it's not, it's just a, it's a, it's a dummy voltage here, but I think this is, this reflects battery voltage. Uh, and I, I uh, under uh, uh, normal atmospheric pressure, uh, no vacuum, it came up to 12 volts. So I'm pretty sure battery voltage is zero or um, 14 PSI, which will give you atmospheric pressure. So I'm not saying it's wrong, but 14 PSI, if I understand, is normal atmospheric pressure. Uh, so I'm not too technical on that. I can't remember, but I guess that that'll our normal static pressure atmosphere or uh, is, is going to be 14 PSI. Anything above that, it's going to be um, like boost pressure or something. I don't know. But either way, uh, let me see if I can get a better look at this. Uh, I could put spark plugs in here and recheck the fuel trim, but the only thing it would do is 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 continue to drop the numbers. Um, the excessive gap, if there is one with these old plugs, might cause a, a longer burn, which will cause probably leaner conditions. I guess if they're filed, it could cause richer conditions. Um, it, it's, it's so many variations how a plug can impact the fuel trim but uh, from a normal uh, I guess a normal standpoint of like if the plugs are just worn out you have a, in, excuse me you have an inefficient burn which will, which could cause it could cause rich conditions I mean it could cause mm, I don't, I don't think it'll be so over exaggerated with the rich condition with the inefficient burn, but normally it depends. I'm just going to put it that way. I'm not even going to go into that realm of infinite possibilities with the spark plug or just analyzing it. And I don't have it in front of my face right now, but our numbers are still dropping. Uh, this car was obvious, had an exhaust leak, it's fixed. Uh, let, let's pull out the plugs and see what they look like because I got to throw those in there. Um, I also just changed the oil too before I started driving it so the only thing left I gotta do is change the plug so let's take a look at those okay hey, let's start pulling these plugs out I got some uh, NGK V powers that are going back in here these are just like a standard what are you like a, there's like a pl platinum plug uh, like these haven't came out in a while. Ah, I believe what is. Ah. Damn, she hard. <laughs> she might be something up. I mean, it's, my brother did buy this car to you, so. Something we're not. We're not being told. Well, this plug don't even want to come out. I don't know, man. That plug don't want to come out of here. So this one's coming out. I could literally get myself into some trouble getting that plug out, but at the same time, I 
I'm curious. My curiosity generally leads me in, in very bad places. So these plugs, they look okay. They look normal. They're not black like I thought. They got iridiums in here, which is not a good thing or, or a bad thing. So uh, I think that one might be cross-threaded. I might spend a little effort trying to get it out. I'm curious to see what's in there and what it looks like. Let me hit it with some penetrating oil. Problem is I get oil down in there and this plug is actually stuck and that oil is just gonna have to sit in there. Maybe have a Healy coil in there, time cert. Yeah, it's cross threaded. Honestly, I mean, if in hindsight, you know, now that I know what the plug, I should have left it in there. But um, I don't know if I got a tap for a spark plug. I, I got something to open it up more. Probably just put some. It probably didn't damage the three. It's coming all the way out though. Huh. Yeah, it did. It kind of. <sighs> hmm. Now I can either put the iridiums back in there, which is supposed to last quite a while, or I can put the standard plug in there, like something close to it, like a platinum. I think a platinum is what go in here, not a copper. Hmm. I mean, I'll put this back in there, and then the threads are just going to get worse, so either I can put something in better shape. I'm just going to put these in there. All right, let's see what happens. Worst case scenario, just gotta put a time cert in there. But this should work, it has plenty of thread on it. Yeah, we're fine. Cool. Hey, I'm gonna wrap this video up, but I mean, the plugs look fine. I mean, they were obviously replaced, it was just this one was a problem. You know, it was cross threaded top of it, but worst case scenario, I gotta put a time cert in there if the damn thing shoot out, but it seemed to torque down pretty normal like any other spark plug. It snugged itself. Uh other than that, saw a crack in the manifold, saw the fuel trims, fuel trim change. Once uh, we put a new converter on. Uh, I was pretty interesting. I thought the plugs were probably gonna be fouled out, but you know, I don't I'm not perfect. You know, I assume that if it was determining that it was rich conditions, it'll add more fuel, creating a rich condition. But um, I guess being that the cylinder still burn efficiently, this car doesn't seem to be having too many problems. Or having any problems in as far as the combustion process, oil consumption, or anything. So uh, I think what happened when they sold this car so cheap because they didn't want to put a catalytic converter on here, and the store would have been probably a little bit triple the price i think these are like 500 plus dollars in the store we bought it for like less than 200 dollars off rock auto uh other than that i was under the impression the plugs might alter the fuel trim which i'm pretty sure they can on minute scales 
something that's so insignificant, maybe it's like a 0.5%, maybe at best a percent, a percent or so. But in comparison to what's, what we're currently witnessing with the spark plug. Other than that, I mean, it was pretty interesting to see. Interesting to see uh, the fuel trims alter right in front of our face. Uh, more than likely, I'll just clear the code, being that they did change versus him having to go through a complete drive cycle uh, or having to start up and clearing on its own. I'm very confident this lean issue is fixed. It's very obvious. The fuel trims are going well within specification. Other than that, hey, if anything else happened, I mean, I'll keep you updated. Of course, just look in the comments and see if there's anything um, updated with, with this vehicle. Um, I try to update things periodically in case I do have any issues to keep some type of transparency. Hell, who am I, right? <laughs> but look, anything can happen. I mean, the world's full of infinite possibilities. Hit the subscribe link, stay informed, have that reassurance of my work, and uh, I'll see you on the next one.